Hello, we are going to be talking, uh, working on lesson P5, day 3, for Algebra 2. Today we're going to be focusing on perfect square trinomials. We're going to be factoring on sum of cubes, difference of cubes, and I think that's it for today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is factoring a perfect square trinomial. In a perfect square trinomial, both ends are perfect squares, and then the middle is double the product of their roots. For example, the square root of a squared is a, the square root of b squared is b. If I multiply these two together and multiply by 2, I get 2ab, which is what's in the middle. That's the, that's the only way this will work is if the ends are perfect roots, and if you double their product, you get what's in the middle. If that is the case, if those three things check, then your perfect binomial will be this term at first, this term on the end, and the sign of whatever's in the middle. Every time. It always works. Okay, over here, if that sign's a negative, again, the square root of a squared is a, the square root of b squared is b. If you multiply these and double them, you get 2ab, which is what's in the middle. So this will factor into a perfect square. It will be this term at first, this term on the end, and b sign in the middle, which would be minus. And you can check it if you wanted to. If I took a plus b times itself, I would have a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared. Combine like terms, I get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I got back exactly what I started with. Same would happen over here. All right, so let's do some real examples. You, you can't decide whether they're perfect or not until you check the ends and double the product of the roots. So your ends, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. If I double that product, I'd have 2 times x times 3, which would be 6x. Is that in the middle? Yes. Then x squared plus 6x plus 9 will factor into a perfect square. And all you have to do is take these two terms and put them in. You put the roots in and you copy the sign in the middle, which is plus. And we're done. Okay, now what if any of these three things aren't true? If this isn't perfect, and this isn't perfect, and this isn't double the middle, then you have to use your A or other techniques that we learned previously. A times C or whatever technique works. Okay, if I check this one. Okay, the square root of 25x squared is perfect. It's 5x. The square root of 36 is perfect because it's 6. If I multiply and double the middle, I get 2 times 5x times 6, which would be 2 times 30x, would be 60x. Since that is what the middle is, 25x squared minus 60x plus 36 will factor into a perfect square. And it will be with these two terms, 5x and 6, and the sign of b, which is negative. Done. And again, you can always check these out by multiplying them back together and see if you get the original. 5 times 5x, 5x times 5x would be 25x squared. 5x times negative 6 is negative 30x. Negative 6 times 5x is negative 30x. Negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. Combine like terms. 25x squared minus 60x plus 36. That's what I started with, so I factored correctly. All right. Okay, you tried this one. Go ahead and hit pause, work it out, restart, and we're back. And the answer is 3. If you didn't get that, let's look at why. The square root of my first term is perfect. 
the square root of my last term is perfect. Double the product, 7x times 2 would be 14x, which is what's in the middle, so I am good to go. This is going to factor into a perfect square. Oops, sorry. This is going to factor into a perfect square. Okay, and it will be these terms, x and 7, with the sine of b squared, which means x minus 7 times x minus 7. Okay. All right. Try this one. Hit pause. When you're ready, come back and check your answer. And you should have gotten 1. If you didn't, let's look at why. If I take the square root of 100x squared, it's perfect. That's 10x. The square root of 1 is 1. Double the product. 2 times 10x would be 20x, which is what's in the middle. So my check works, which means this is going to factor into a perfect square using 10x and 1 with b sine. Done. All right, so how do you factor a perfect square trinomial? Well, you have to go through your three checks, okay? If the three checks work, then it's going to factor into the square root of the first, sine of b, and square root of the last term, squared. If the three checks work, you got to check to make sure your ends are perfect and that double the product of the roots is the middle term. All right, factoring the sum or difference of two cubes. If you have the sum, meaning addition, of two perfect cubes, it will factor into a bino trino with these signs, plus, minus, plus, every time. Every time it works, okay? If you have difference of cubes, it will always factor into a bino, trino, minus, plus, plus, which is minus, plus, plus right there. How you get your roots, or the number, or the terms inside, is you take the cube roots. It's easier to show with an example. So here, if I try and factor x cubed plus 8, okay, check your ends. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 8 is 2. And if you didn't know that off the top of your head, it's because I can break it down. And 3, 2 saves a 2. Okay, so the ends are perfect. It's a sum. So my song goes bino, trino, plus, minus, plus. And here's what you do for your terms. Okay. These go in your first one. Those are your bino terms. And they go to the second. They go into the trino. X wants to go right into the first place over here. But when he goes in, he has to square himself because he's in the big boy world now, the trino world. Two is last in the bino house. He needs to move to the last place in the trino house, but he's going to square himself to do so. And then to get the middle term, the two roots inside here multiply together and put themselves in the center, which would be 2x. So all together I would have x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. Okay, the x goes, the first in here goes to the first in here, but he squares himself. Whatever's last in the bino goes last in the trino, but he squares himself. And then these two multiply together and go to the center every time, and you have your factors. And again, you can check yourself by multiplying it out. If I multiply these back together, x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. x times positive 4 is positive 4x. Distribute the 2. 2 times x squared is positive 2x squared. Positive 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x. Positive 2 times positive 4 is positive 8. And if I combine like terms, 
This negative 2x squared cancels this positive 2x squared. This positive 4x cancels this negative 4x. And all I'm left with is x cubed plus 8, which is what I started with, so I factored correctly. x cubed plus 8 equals x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. Done. All right, so let's do another one. This one is difference of cubes, I think. Check it. The cube root of 64x cubed is 4x. If you don't know how I did that, I broke down. 64 by 2 is 32, by 2 is 16, by 2 is 8, by 2 is 4, by 2 is 2. 3, 2 saves a 2, 3, 2 saves a 2. And the cube root of x cubed is, saves an x. So there's my 4x. The cube root of 125 is 5. Yes. All right. So they are perfect cubes. It's a difference. So my song says, by no, try no, minus, plus, plus. Your bino terms are the roots. 4x and 5. 4x is first. He wants to be first in the trino, but he's got to square himself to get in, which makes 16x squared. 5 is second or last in the bino. He's going to be last in the trino, but he's going to square himself and go in as 25. Oh, darn it. And then... The two, the two roots multiply themselves together. 4x times negative 5, don't do the sign, but 4x times 5 would be 20x goes in the middle. So my final answer, 64x cubed minus 125 is equal to 4x minus 5 times 16x squared plus 20x plus 25. Bino trino minus plus plus. And again, if you don't believe that it's going to be right, uh, distribute it back out and check it out. All right, you do this one. Go ahead and hit pause. Do your work. And we're back. And you should get number two. If you did not, let's look at why. Check your ends. The cube root of 8x cubed would be 2x. The cube root of 1 would be 1. So since they're perfect, and this is a sum, it's going to be bino, trino, plus, minus, plus. My bino terms are going to be the roots, 2x and 1. 2x is first in the bino. He's going to be first in the trino, but he's got to square himself. And if I square 2x, I get 4x squared. 1 is last in the bino. He's going to be last in the trino, but he's got to square himself to get in, which would still be 1. And then the middle, you multiply these two together. 2x times 1 is 2x. So 8x cubed plus 1 equals 2x plus 1 times 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. Done. Okay, try another one. Go ahead and hit pause, do the work, and we're back. And check your answer. You should have gotten three. If you did not, let's look at why. The cube root of 125x cubed is 5x. The cube root of 27 is 3. So since they're perfect and it's minus, it's going to be bino, trino minus plus plus my bino terms are my original roots which is 5x and 3 5x is first in the bino it's going to be first in the trino but it's got to square himself to get in which would be 25x squared negative 3 or just the 3 actually we don't need our signs <coughs> 
the three in the first uh, is second in the bino. It's or last in the bino. It's going to be last in the trino, but it's got to square himself to get in, which makes nine. And then in our center, of course, we are going to multiply these two together and get 15x. So my answer would be 5x minus 3 times 25x squared plus 15x plus 9. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So sum of cubes is bino, trino, plus, minus, plus. Difference of cubes is bino, trino, minus, plus, plus. Remember the songs and you'll never go wrong. All right, the rest is pretty much they're going to jumble everything together and you have to decide which strategy you're going to use to factor. This is kind of a, um, I don't know what you call it, a flow chart. One, if there is a common factor, factor it out. Two, determine the number of factors. If there are two terms, see if they're one of the specials. Is it difference of squares, sum of cubes, difference of cubes? If there's three terms, check and see if it's perfect, meaning the ends are both perfect and the middle is double the roots. If it's not, but it's three terms and it's not perfect, then it's the general trinome. If the leading coefficient is one, follow these steps. If the leading coefficient is not 1, you have to do the whole A times C song. If there are four terms, use your grouping. Okay, and then always check to make sure if any of your factors can be factored farther. So, on this one, I count the terms. There are three terms, but it is not a general because it doesn't go second degree, first degree constant. But I notice that I, there is a GCF. I can factor out all three of these. A 2 will go into all of them and they have one X in common. So my GCF times what's left, my GCF is 2X. 2X cubed divided by 2X is going to leave X squared. 8X squared divided by 2X is going to leave a positive 4X. And positive 8X divided by positive 2X is going to leave positive 4. And we're done factoring, but again, watch that last step. It says, can any of your factors be factored further? Well, 2x can. It's a monomial, so drop it. But this is now a general trino because it goes second degree, first degree constant. If you have a general trino and a is 1, our steps are find the factors of c, which would be 1 and 4, 2 and 2, and I'm trying to make 4 in the middle. If I add 1 and 4, I get 5. Subtract, I get 3. Nope. If I add, I get 4. There's my pair. Now, when A isn't 1, you have to rewrite B, 2 by 2, GCF, GCF, GCF again, woo. But if A is 1, you're ready to set up your two binos and your pair of numbers that are going to go with you or, or inside are going to be the 2s. So I'm going to have an x and a 2, an x and a 2, and then c will tell you your signs. If c is positive, they both get to be b sign. If c is negative, only one of them. My c is positive, so they both get the sign of b, and b is, in this case, positive, so both of them get to be pluses, and I am done. And if you're not sure, distribute everything back out, multiply everything back together, and check it. Okay? This one, your author is going to be a jerk. He's really, really putting two things together as, as one. First of all, I noticed that if these three were touching or next to each other, x squared plus 8x plus 16, that would be a general trinomial. And then if I put this minus 25a squared on the end, let me change colors, minus 25a squared on the end. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know, let's see. This is a general trino, so I'm going to factor that first. And I happen to notice, and you'll get used to it the older you get, that the ends are perfect squares. Okay, so I check to see if it's perfect. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is 4. Sorry. 
double the product would be 8x. Is that what's in the middle? Yes. Then this is a perfect square, and it's going to be the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is 4. And the sine of b in the middle is plus. So now I have x plus 4 squared minus 25a squared. Yes? And now your author is going, hey, you're not done because now you have difference of squares. I mean the square root of the first, x plus 4 squared is x plus 4. The square root of 25a squared would be 5a, so they are perfect. This is minus, so it's going to be bino, bino, plus and bino. But my two terms look a little odd now. This is my first term, so x plus 4, x plus 4. And this is my second term, plus 5a, minus 5a, and I'm done. Okay? All right, so you do this one. If you notice, again, uh, oops, uh, push pause. And we're back, and the answer is 2. If you did not get that, let's look at why. I always look for GCF first. I notice that I can factor out a 4 and an x. If I factor out 4x, divide by it, 4x cubed divided by 4x to the first leaves x squared. 484x divided by 4x leaves me minus 121. And again, your author is famous for wanting to trick you. You think you're done, but always check your factors to see if they can be factored more. And this is difference of squares, because the square root of x squared is perfect. The square root of 121 is perfect. This can't be touched. It's a monomial. You can't do anything else to it, but this will split into bino, bino, plus n, mino. And my two terms are going to be x and 11. So x plus 11 and x minus 11. I'm done. All right, if you do this one, again, notice that these all, I mean, you could do A times C, find all the factors, rewrite B, 2 by 2, GCF, GCF, GCF again. That always works if it's a general trino. But you can make your life easier if you notice I can GCF a 2 out first. And if I divide them all by 2, I get x squared minus 8x minus 9. All right, 2 is prime, but now I have a general trino. And a is 1, which makes life easy for me. I just find factors of c, 1 and 9, 3 and 3. The only way I can get 8 out of those pairs is if I use 1 and 8 by subtraction, right? So that's going to be my pair that I use. So my two... Um, factors are both going to have an x, one's going to have an x and a 1, one's going to have an x and a 9. C will tell me how to put my signs. Since C is negative, they don't both get to be like B, only the bully gets to be like B. So 9 gets to take the, uh, the negative, which means 1 has to take, sorry, which means 1 has to take Nine gets to take the negative, which means one has to take the positive, and I am done. Yeah. All right. Next, they want me to factor this completely. He's trying to make you go. Oh, well, that's x. The square root of that is x. The square root of four is two, so it's going to be x plus two, x minus two, and it would be if that was a negative, but it's not. You cannot, not yet, you cannot factor the sum of squares. That's got to be a minus, not a plus. So this one would actually be prime. Okay. All right, you do this one, push pause. And we're back. And you should have gotten three. 
Right now, those are not perfect cubes because I can't take the cube root of 2 and I can't. So I need to see if I can factor something out. And I can. I can factor a 2 out. If I factor out a 2, that would leave me x cubed plus 125. Okay, and again, every time you think you're done factoring, look at the factor again and see if you can't factor it further. This looks like it might be sum of cubes, so check the ends and the sign. The cube root of x cubed is perfect. The cube root of 125 is perfect. So this is going to be factorable into a bino, trino, plus, minus, plus. Mm -hmm. And this 2 is going to drop down. And my two terms are going to be, or my bino terms are x and 5. x is first in the bino, he's going to be first in the trino, but he's going to square himself to get in. 5, and again, I don't care about signs, 5 is last in the bino, he's going to be last in the trino, but he's going to square himself to get in, which would be 25. And then the two terms, the two roots, are going to multiply together and go in the middle. So my final answer would be the GCF2 by the bino and the trino from the song. Okay. All right. Go ahead, push pause, do this one. And we're back. And you should have gotten one. If you didn't, let's look at why. The first thing, always, always look for GCFs first. I noticed that both of them have a 10 and 1x in common. So if I GCF out a 10x, divide by it, I get x to the fourth minus 1. And that answer isn't there because, again, every time you think you're done, check your factors. This is difference of squares. Because the square root of x to the fourth is x squared, and the square root of 1 is 1, and that's a minus. So this is going to split. This is going to split into bino, bino, plus n, mino, and 10x is going to drop. Okay, and over to the side, we'll give you my roots. It's going to be x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 1. And that answer is there, but why isn't that the correct answer? Well, um, 10x is prime. There's nothing else I can do to it. It's a monomial. Sum of squares is illegal to touch right now, so that's going to stay x squared plus 1. But isn't this difference of squares again? The square root of x squared is 1. The square root of 1 is 1, I mean x, and that's a minus. So this will split into bino, bino, plus n, mino. And my two terms will be an x and a 1. So x plus 1, x minus 1. OK? All right. So. Can you recognize when a polynomial can be first factored by the GCF followed by other methods? <coughs> all right. And that is where we are going to end. The rest is all homework. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day. I will see you next time.